Question. Which of the following is the initial sign, symptom of a client with renal failure? 1. Dysuria. 2. Anuria. 3. Oliguria. 4. Hematuria. Answer. Option 3 is correct. Oliguria is the most common initial symptom of acute, renal failure. Anuria is rarely the initial symptom. Dysuria and hematuria are not associated with acute renal failure. Question. What is the cause of elevated blood urea, nitrogen in a patient with renal failure? 1. Fluid retention. 2. Hemolysis of red blood cells. 3. Reduced renal blood flow. 4. Below normal metabolic rate. Answer. Option 3 is correct. Urea, an end product of protein metabolism, is excreted by the kidneys. Impairment in renal function caused by reduced renal blood flow results in an increase in the plasma urea level. Fluid retention, hemolysis of red blood cells, and lowered metabolic rate do not cause an elevated BU and value. Question. A client with renal failure is scheduled for peridoneal dialysis. To prepare for the procedure, the nurse should 1. Warm the solution in the warmer. 2. Check the dialysis access for a brute and thrill. 3. Insert an indwelling urinary catheter and drain all urine from the bladder. 4. Ask the client to turn toward the left side. Answer. Option 1 is correct. Solution for peridoneal dialysis should be warmed to body temperature in a warmer or with a heating pad. Do not use the microwave. Cold dialysate increases discomfort. Checking for a brute and thrill is necessary with hemodialysis when the client has a fistula, graft, or shunt. An indwelling urinary catheter is not required for this procedure. The nurse should position the client in a supine or low, Fowler's position. Question. The nurse administers sodium polystyrene sulfonate, k exhalate to a client with acute renal failure with an elevated potassium level of 4.5 mech per liter. This drug acts to 1. Exchange sodium for potassium ions in the colon. 2. Increase potassium excretion from the colon. 3. Release hydrogen ions for sodium ions. 4. Increase calcium absorption in the colon. Answer. Option 1 is correct. Polystyrene sulfonate, a cation exchange resin, causes the body to excrete potassium through the gastrointestinal tract. In the intestines, particularly the colon, the sodium of the resin is partially replaced by potassium. The potassium is then eliminated when the resin is eliminated with feces. Although the result is to increase potassium excretion, the specific method of action is the exchange of sodium ions for potassium ions. Polystyrene sulfonate does not release hydrogen ions or increase calcium absorption. Question. A client with renal failure should consume a high carbohydrate, low protein. The intended outcome of this diet is to 1. Act as a diuretic. 2. Prevent the development of ketosis. 3. Reduce demands on the liver. 4. Help maintain urine acidity. Answer. Option 2 is correct. High-carbohydrate foods meet the body's caloric needs during acute renal failure. Protein is limited because its breakdown may result in accumulation of toxic waste products. The main purpose of nutritional therapy in acute renal failure is to decrease protein catabolism. Protein catabolism causes elevated levels of urea, phosphate, and potassium. Carbohydrates provide energy and decrease the need for protein breakdown. They do not have a diuretic effect. Some specific carbohydrates influence urine pH, but this is not the reason for encouraging a high-carbohydrate, low-protein diet. There is no need to reduce demands on the liver through dietary manipulation in acute renal failure. Question. The client recovering from acute renal failure asks the nurse, will my kidneys normally function again? The nurse correctly responds when he says, 1. Result in the need for permanent hemodialysis. 2. Improve only if the client receives a renal transplant. 3. Continue to improve over a period of weeks. 4. Result in end-stage renal failure. Answer. Option 3 is correct. The kidneys have a remarkable ability to recover from serious insult.
Recovery may take 3 to 12 months. The client should be educating how to recognize the signs and symptoms of decreasing renal function and to notify the physician if such problems occur. In a client who is recovering from acute renal failure, there is no need for renal transplantation or permanent hemodialysis. Chronic renal failure develops before end-stage renal failure. Question. The client, while on hemodialysis, receives heparin. The nurse educates the client that supports anticoagulation by making which statement? 1. You will receive warfarin sodium, coumadin, to maintain anticoagulation between treatments. 2. Regional anticoagulation is achieved by putting heparin in the dialysis machine and protamin sulfate, which reverses the anticoagulation in the client. 3. Heparin does not enter the body, so there is no risk of bleeding. 4. Clotting time is seriously prolonged for several hours after each treatment. Answer. Option 2 is correct. Regional anticoagulation can be achieved by infusing heparin in the dialyzer and protamin sulfate, its antagonist, in the client. Warfarin sodium, coumadin, is not used in dialysis treatment. There is some risk of bleeding, however, clotting time is monitored closely. The client's clotting time will not be seriously affected although some rebound effect may occur. Question. A client with acute renal failure has been admitted. A nurse should perform the following. Select all that apply. 1. Contact the hemodialysis unit. 2. Elevate the head of the bed 30 to 45 degrees. 3. Take vital signs. 4. Establish an IV access site. 5. Contact the admitting physician for medication. Answer. Options 2, 3, 4, and 5 are correct. Elevation of the head of the bed will promote ease of breathing. Respiratory manifestations of acute renal failure include shortness of breath, orthopnea, crackles, and the potential for pulmonary edema. Therefore, priority is placed on facilitation of respiration. The nurse should assess the vital signs, elevated pulse, and respirations seen in a client with renal failure. Establishing a site for IV therapy will become important because fluids will be administered IV in addition to orally. The admitting physician will need to be contacted for further prescriptions. There is no need to contact the hemodialysis unit. Question. A client with acute renal failure has an elevated serum, potassium level. The nurse should monitor the client for 1. Pulmonary edema. 2. Circulatory collapse. 3. Hemorrhage. 4. Cardiac arrest. Answer. Option 4 is correct. Hyperkalemia places the client at risk for serious cardiac arrhythmias and cardiac arrest. Therefore, the nurse should carefully monitor the client for cardiac arrhythmias and be prepared to treat cardiac arrest when caring for a client with hyperkalemia. Elevated potassium levels do not result in pulmonary edema, circulatory collapse, or hemorrhage. Question. A client in the oliguric phase of acute renal failure, the nurse should assess for 1. Metabolic alkalosis. 2. Pulmonary edema. 3. Hypotension. 4. Hypokalamia. Answer. Option 2 is correct. Pulmonary edema can develop during the oliguric phase of acute renal failure because of decreased urine output and fluid retention. Metabolic acidosis develops because the kidneys cannot excrete hydrogen ions and bicarbonate is used to buffer the hydrogen. Hypertension may develop as a result of fluid retention. Hyperkalemia develops as the kidneys lose the ability to excrete potassium. Question. What is an appropriate snack for a patient with elevated potassium levels? 1. A gelatin dessert. 2. Yogurt. 3. An orange. 4. Peanuts. Answer. Option 1 is correct. Gelatin desserts contain little or no potassium and can be served to a client on a potassium-restricted diet. Foods high in potassium include bran and whole grains, most dried, raw and frozen fruits and vegetables, most milk and milk products, chocolate, nuts, raisins, coconut, and strong brewed coffee. Question. While on the first hemodialysis treatment, the client develops confusion, nausea, and headache. The nurse should assess the client further for 1. 
myocardial infarction. 2. Air embolism. 3. Peritonitis. 4. Disequilibrium syndrome. Answer. Option 4 is correct. Common symptoms of disequilibrium syndrome include confusion, nausea and headache, and even seizures. Disequilibrium syndrome typically occurs near the end or after the completion of hemodialysis treatment. It is the result of rapid changes in solute composition and osmolality of the extracellular fluid. These symptoms are not related to cardiac function, air embolism, or peritonitis. Question. The client in acute renal failure has an external cannula inserted in the forearm for hemodialysis. Which of the following nursing intervention is appropriate for the care of this client? 1. Draw blood from the cannula for routine laboratory work. 2. Percuss the cannula for brutes each shift. 3. Inject heparin into the cannula each shift. 4. Use the unaffected arm for blood pressure measurements. Answer. Option 4 is correct. The unaffected arm should be used for blood pressure measurement. The external cannula must be handled carefully and protected from damage and disruption. A tourniquet or clamps should be kept at the bedside because dislodgement of the cannula would cause arterial hemorrhage. The arm with the cannula is not used for blood pressure measurement, IV therapy, or venipuncture. Patency is assessed by auscultating for brutes every shift. Heparin is not injected into the cannula to maintain patency. Because it is part of the general circulation, the cannula cannot be heparinized. Question. Which of the following abnormal laboratory values would not be improved by dialysis treatment? 1. Decreased hemoglobin concentration. 2. Elevated serum creatinine level. 3. Hyperkalemia. 4. Hypernatremia. Answer. Option 1 is correct. Dialysis has no effect on anemia. Because some red blood cells are injured during the procedure, dialysis aggravates a low hemoglobin concentration. Dialysis will clear metabolic waste products from the body and correct electrolyte imbalances. Question. The nurse educates the client how to recognize infection in the shunt by telling the client to assess the shunt each day for 1. Absence of a brute. 2. Sluggish capillary refill time. 3. Swelling at the shunt site. 4. Coolness of the involved extremity. Answer. Option 3 is correct. Signs and symptoms of an external access shunt infection include redness, tenderness, swelling, and drainage from around the shunt site. The absence of a brute indicates closing. Of the shunt. Sluggish capillary refill time and coolness of the extremity indicate decreased blood flow to the extremity. Question. While on dialysis, the client experiences disequilibrium syndrome. What is the initial action by the nurse? 1. Slow the rate of dialysis. 2. Administer oxygen per nasal cannula. 3. Reassure the client that the symptoms are normal. 4. Place the client in Trendelenburg's position. Answer. Option 1 is correct. If disequilibrium syndrome occurs during dialysis, the most appropriate intervention is to slow the rate of dialysis. The syndrome is believed to result from too rapid removal of urea and excess electrolytes from the blood. This causes transient cerebral edema, which produces the symptoms. Administration of oxygen and position changes do not affect the symptoms. It would not be proper to reassure the client that the symptoms are normal. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and watch playlist for more videos.